How's it going, Ole Miss softball fans? Getting the first chance here to sit down with new pitching coach Riker Chasen. Uh, you've been around in Oxford for about a month or so now. I know times are weird, but how has the adjustment period been for you so far? Yeah, it's been a little different, but it's nice. I really like Oxford, so glad that, you know, they're taking some precautions and we're still able to go out and do things right now. Just have to wear the mask, but we're making sure we do that. But it's been nice. I've enjoyed it so far. Your background's really interesting in that uh, mm -hmm. you are a member of the 40-man pool for the national team for softball. A lot of guys, it's baseball that you grow up playing and everything. How did you make that path? What drew you towards playing softball? Yeah, so I grew up playing baseball, actually. Um, grew up playing multiple sports, but um, wasn't until about my sophomore year in high school <clears throat> that I decided to switch over to softball. But starting with my background in softball, my dad coached. So when I was a young kid, he was coaching our high school softball team. He started coaching my sisters. I have two older sisters that played, and as soon as they started playing, he started coaching them. So I was always around it. Um, and I tell people all the time, I was that like annoying little brother at the back of the dugout, just making arm circles, um, getting on everybody's nerves. But yeah, just kind of taught myself how to pitch. And then next thing I know, my dad threw me on the field and I was throwing bat in practice and I was like 10 and balls are getting smoked past my head. Kind of chuck and duck is what I called it. Um, yeah, so just learned to pitch that way. And then there was a guy in my hometown who he played men's fast pitch back in the late 80s, early 90s with Ken Erickson and some of those guys. Uh, called the Clearwater Bombers, and he just kind of got me throwing a little bit, <clears throat> and he was like, man, you're really good. So they took some video, and somebody sent the video to somebody who sent it to somebody, and next thing I know, the national team was calling my phone, like, hey, you want to come try out? And I'm like, sure. So that was when I was just turned 15, and so I, I was on the junior men's national team for four years before I made the 40-man roster for the USA men's national team. Well, you explained that really well because it feels like the, the hitting side of things, they're really similar on the aspects. It is the yeah. throwing side that you, you taught yourself how to pitch. Right? Yeah, yeah, I did. Walk so us through that. There was, a, there was a brick wall in, <laughs> well, in not our second house that we moved to, it was a brick wall right beside our pool, and I just hammered it until all the bricks busted <laughs> and pretty much just taught myself. But I pitched in baseball as well. so. I was pretty athletic growing up, so I had a pretty good – played football, played basketball, played baseball, and then just started making some arm circles. Well, you can hear it, the, the wealth of knowledge, even though you're so young, fresh out of LSU. What does it mean to you that Jamie has that respect, that trust for you, uh, to name you an SEC school's pitching coach so young in your career? Yeah, um, it's definitely an honor. Um, I think it speaks a lot to the people that I've surrounded myself with and the reputation I've created for myself. Um, being on the junior men's national team, spending some time with the women's national team just off of being on the junior men's national team. I traveled the country um, with them, traveled the world, went to Japan and Canada with them. Um, and then I was at LSU for four years, coached travel ball while I was there, did lessons while I was there. So just just had my name in a lot of pots. And, you know, people like Beth Trina have great respect for me, had a lot of great things to say about me, um, was able to kind of back me. And I feel like that's what got me here. Yeah, Beth Tarina was the next name I was going to bring up. She's one of the best doing it in the SEC. What were you able to gain from her knowledge-wise as you spent some time on the staff in Baton Rouge? God, I just smile when I hear that. Um, I learned so much. I walked in there uh, thinking that I knew a lot, you know, thinking I was on the national team and I knew it all. And um, she just took me under her wing um, every day. You know, it was more than – more than just growing me as a coach, she grew me as a person, um, but she taught me a lot. Um, Jamie actually asked me when I got the job, she said, why do you think Beth trusted you so much? I said, I don't know if I gave her a choice. I said, I think when I showed up, I just hopped in the bullpen and I never got out. And then it got to the point where she was like looking over her shoulder, kind of like, where's Riker? Um, I sat next to her every single game from the first game of my freshman year. Um, and we just grew a bond, a special bond. And, you know, she, like I said, she grew me as a coach, but also as a person. And she, she really taught me a lot. There's been some really fun matchups between LSU and the Rebs over the past. They, the rivalry started to bud there towards uh, the latter part of the, these past few years. What do you remember from some of those games? There's been some exciting ones. Oh, God. The first one that comes to mind is the 19-inning game between Caitlin Lee and Allie Wall Jasper. That was just a – woof. that was a night. And I will never forget, I'm like, we're going on, you know, until like the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th inning, and that's like – I charted the pitches next to her, and she's like, what is she at? And I'm, like, calculated up. I have to, like, flip over onto the back of my sheet, and I'm still counting. I'm like, that she's at, like, two. this is pitch number 250. And that's at, like, <laughs> and she's like, 
and she just, she still looks good. And we just kept making sure she was okay. And her and Caitlin just battled it out. And we were fortunate enough to, to come out on top of that one. But that was amazing. Probably one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. That's one that I won't forget either, just watching it on the couch. I couldn't imagine being there and, and, and seeing uh, it in person. It was insane. And then when we won, it was even more insane. And, you know, it just happened to turn our way. And some things went our way. And we pulled that one out. You've been in town now for a little bit. The team's slowly uh, trickling in, returning back here to Oxford. I'm also sure you've gotten to see a little bit of tape on the returning players. What are your just first impressions of this group returning here in 2021? Yeah, well, they're a group that, you know, only lost a couple players from their Super Regional, um, their last Super Regional run. And I think they're a very talented group. Um, you know, I'm getting to know them better. Gillum, you know, going to work out and, um, we're having individual Zoom meetings with them, and I've had individual Zoom meetings with the pitchers. And just getting to know them better is really exciting. But just from watching some film with them from a skill-related side, they're a very talented group. Um, they know how to win, how to win. They have won, um, which is exciting because I think, you know, we're just going to be able to come in here for people who already know what it's like to play at a really high level and play in this league and host a regional and go to a super regional and just continue to develop on top of that. And you're kind of hinting at it. It feels like Coach Traxel's building something special. That's just from an outside perspective. I don't, I, I don't know anything. What does it feel like to you? Because that's what it feels like to me. She is special, and that's why I'm here. I will say that. Uh, you know, I was very, very fortunate to be a part of a special staff um, at a special place where I came from. And I knew from, you know, the second interview with her that she just did things the right way, you know, and she was going to create something special but treating kids the way they deserve to be treated. And um, she is special and it's starting to show up every day and it's just more and more. And every day more that I'm around her and Katie, I realize, you know, that I made the right choice. Um, and I'm glad that I'm here and I'm glad I'm on this journey with them. And we are going to build something very special. Well, I've enjoyed getting to know you already through these first couple of weeks or whatever it is. And we're excited to see what you guys are capable of putting together out on the field as we push towards 2021. I know that sounds crazy, but that's where we're at in this year. Uh, and, and I know you're out uh, grinding, looking for future Rebels as well. So we'll let you get back to work, but we appreciate the time you spent with us here today. Of course. I appreciate it, Seth. Happy to be here. Thank you.